All right, so we're starting the injured reserve. We got Tyler, is it Kaplan or Capellan? How do you say your last name? Uh, either way, like growing up, I got both. So I got Cap Kaplan from like family and then Capellan from all coaches. So either there way. There we go. PT extraordinaire, computer guy extraordinaire. Um, I did some research on you, so I got a bunch of questions, and then we'll just we'll see how you answer them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, don't just don't trick me with anything. No traps. I will not. Like there's, there's no traps. Nothing crazy. Um, so first, what was it like growing up in Warwick, New York? That's where you're from, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Warwick was awesome, man. Like, do you want the long answer or the short answer? <laughs> Give me the long answer. Give me the <laughs> okay. 15 minute answer. All right. So work was cool. Um, I originally was born in a, in Manhattan and then we lived in a place oh, called shoot. Yonkers. So I lived in Yonkers until I was about four years old and it was a bad area. So my parents got, got us out of there after um, there was a shooting actually. So they were like, right, we're, we're, yeah, yeah. So like a shooting kids, next to you or so in a the shooting, area? So, so this, I was four, but my brother and my cousin hung out with these kids um the kids hung out with people who did drugs and whatnot sold drugs whatever um one day my brother and my cousin were hanging out kids got in trouble a shooting happened my brother and my cousin made it out thankfully fine like six of their friends ended up going to jail so my uh parents are like all right we're we're done <laughs> so yeah that's li- a good, like good sign yeah like <laughs> legit um maybe two months after that we were already packed up and moved in so wow yeah, so my parents found a house up in uh, in Warwick. You've been there. And it was awesome, man. The thing is, you go from being in the city to being in the suburbs. So growing up was cool. There was a lot of things to do, a lot of sports. But as you might have known in Inglewood, like in for me in my area, there was five black kids in school. Oh yeah. So, so it was it was a little weird. Like my first grade class had one other kid. So like other than like the occasional jokes and stuff, it was awesome. Um, yeah. Everyone was really cool. I never had any like a holes around me or anything like that. But you always felt different growing up a little bit. Oh uh, yeah, so. I mean, so people who don't know, Warwick is like an hour and a half north of New York City. Mm-hmm. Um, how did your parents choose Warwick out of? I they guess, were anywhere they you were could go? they were looking around in a lot of different areas. There's like six surrounding towns. And uh, they just looked for houses. They had houses in like two other towns, but both of those fell through. And this was the one that they loved. Like it had a backyard. It, it was nice. It was quiet. It was so quiet. Like going from where I used to live to work, dude, it's like you can actually hear birds. You could see stars, like all that. Stuff. <laughs> There's animals outside, birds yeah. chirping. Yeah. There's there's bears like deer. I hit a deer two minutes away from my house, but that's that's a you hit a deer. I hit a deer one like uh my first summer back, my first winter back from um from college. I was driving down the highway because I lived right off a highway, and this deer like it wasn't like it was walking across. It jumped, landed in front of my car. I hit it, and then it it was trying to jump away, and it just flew off the road. And it totaled my car. Yeah. Did the deer die? Crazy. Do you know? Or uh, it I don't know. Hurt? It was it was like ten o'clock at night, so it landed in the bushes, and I didn't know what to do, so I just went home. And, <laughs> That's got to be yeah. so scary. Dude, You're just driving, was, cruising, and out of nowhere, bang! A, yeah, tears on your windshield. Yep, yep. I I crushed it. Um, my car was jacked up for a little bit. Um, but yeah, that was uh, wow. it. Was awesome though. Wow. But yeah, yeah so. so, they, so Go ahead. Yeah, keep going. Go, go. Um, so for people who don't know, I went to Warwick maybe a couple months ago and yeah. driving around, there was a lot of deer, which I was kind of yeah. surprised. But yeah, I could I could see you hitting a deer for sure. And those the sharp turns and all this yeah. other stuff. It was a lot of a lot of blind turns, a lot of high brush on the sides of the roads. Like it's the legit suburbs. So like stuff is just hiding. Like you never know. You have to actually, if you're not used to driving up there, you're probably going to get in an accident because you have to know like <laughs> what to look out for. You're probably going to get in an accident. <laughs> oh God. All right. Yeah. Um, next, next question. So how did you know you want to become a physical therapist? Uh, I didn't. <laughs> um, nice. So, um, so like in high school, I was really good at science. I loved science. I still do. So I was going to do engineering because I loved physics. It was the best science. 
Um, mm-hmm. But then one day I was in physics class and I was just doing equations and I was like, I don't know if I could do this for the rest of my life. So I went into college not knowing what I wanted to do. I chose pre-pharmacy is what I was going to do. And then I had heard bad things about the career just uh, from friends, friends who were friends with pharmacists. So I ended up going to psychology. That was my major when I graduated. And I had no idea what I was going to do. And I played sports my whole life. So I was like, all right, maybe I could do something where I work with athletes. And I had some trash physical therapy. Like I, I had been injured a lot in high school during playing sports. And it's kind of why I didn't get to the level. I wanted to do sports in college, but I didn't get there. Um, and I realized after being in the program, I realized a lot of my therapists were not the greatest therapists. So mm-hmm. I wanted to do that, but I wanted to make sure that I was giving the kind of help that kids needed. Um, and then having my degree in psychology, I wanted to actually branch off and do a type of physical therapy with psychology incorporated. So I was going to get a sports psychology degree as well. Mm-hmm. And then that way, like kids who have like performance anxiety, kids who like for me, I was an amazing athlete, not like to my own horn, but I was above <laughs> average. I was an yeah. above average athlete. But when I got on the field, I wasn't doing the things I knew I could do. And I didn't know why. And once I got a little older, I got my confidence. I realized I was just in my own head, but I didn't know I was in my own head. So that's why Mm -hmm. you have like, you have professional athletes who can't hit a free throw or kickers who can't, who are shanking kicks one week. So now all these teams have sports psychologists. Yeah. That's a big thing now. Like mental coaches and like performance, mental health coaches who get them in the right mindset before games. And exactly. Yeah. So I wanted, I wanted to get a degree in that, and I actually almost went to school for it, but I didn't want to go to school in Massachusetts, so I turned it down, and then I fell into physical therapy, and I still love it, but I still want to kind of blend that sports psychology into it, too. I was going to say, is that a goal for the future to do more of the psychology, physical therapy, yeah. sport route? Yeah, I just have to figure out how I'm going to work it in. It's not like, like, you know, it's hard to find niches because you're in the career too. It's hard to find something someone else isn't doing. And it's hard to like find the evidence that it works. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to figure out how I can work it in without looking like I'm like shamming people. (laughs) Yeah. Like you don't know what you're doing, I guess, you know? Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm assuming other people who are in the field probably aren't physical therapists. They're more psychologists or mental health people who go into the sports realm exactly i guess it'd be an easier transition than the other way around yep so the year before i went into pt school um i was a resident assistant in uh at stony brook and my old resident director left and he went to springfield university where i guess basketball was created that's what they tell wow that's in indiana (laughs) uh no that's in uh, massachusetts oh shoot so either that's not, I think Indiana is where basketball is created. I think maybe something about the basketball Hall of Fame. They, they care a lot about basketball in Springfield. Yeah. I forgot <laughs> why. Um, so my resident director called me up and he said, look, I want you to be, he had moved higher up in the chain and he called me one day and said, I need a new resident director. I want you to do it. They'll pay for your master's. So I looked at their list of master's degrees and sports psychology was one of them. And I was like, all right, I'll do this. Oh, so shit. I go in, I nail the interview. I do great. And then I realized I don't really want to live in Massachusetts. I want to do more winters. Like yeah. two years would be awesome, but like, what am I going to do after that? So I was like, you know, what? I'm going to turn it down for now and see what else comes. And then the year after, later on that year, I applied for PT school, and then I get into FGCU. So then I just go that route. There you go. Wow. So speaking of goals, I did some research on your Twitter. And mm. I have, <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I should be a researcher. I'm good. Mm-hmm. So um, what you have is a list of goals um, <laughs> that you're wanting to attain. The first one's to get a doctor, which you checked off. Nice. Got your doctor yes. in physical therapy. Yes. The next one is get married, which you are engaged next now. Year. Yes. Next year. Then you got own a Tesla. That's coming. Yeah. Got be- become a Twitch partner. Yes. Um, get on so- the... 
hold on. I'm, I'm gonna go through the whole oh. list and then. Oh, go, go, okay, 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 okay. Okay. The next, Sorry, because the... I know. <laughs> My bad. No, you're good. Uh, the next one is um, become a Twitch partner, then get on the prices right, and then the last one is beat Xavier Woods PhD in best three or five random game series. All right. So the question is, yes. which one? I guess besides get married are you the closest to attaining? And then how did you come up with this list, et cetera? Okay. The closest I'm getting to attaining has to be by default getting a Tesla nice. other than getting married. Um, and I'll explain why. Uh, so um, becoming a Twitch partner. So I know in your past uh, podcast, you, uh, you had um, Vince Casey on and he explained mm-hmm. what becoming a Twitch affiliate is, is getting like uh, 50 people on, getting a certain amount of views, et cetera, et cetera. So I also stream on Twitch. Um, and the next stage after affiliate is Twitch partner. To get a Twitch mm-hmm. partner, you have to have 70, at least I believe, I could be wrong about these numbers. I didn't look this up right away, but I think 75 concurrent viewers on average. So to get affiliate, you just have to have 50 people say, I like you, and then that's it. They click like, and then once you get 50 and you do a few other things, you become a, um, an affiliate. To be a partner, you have to average within a rolling 30 days, 75 people watching you. So mm. that's not people that like you. That's people who tune in and at least 75 are watching you f- over 30 days each time. That's hard. My cap at one point was 20 people who came in for about two to three weeks watch me. I've dropped mm-hmm. down a little bit. Um, but it's 75 and then a few other things after that. But the hardest part is the 75. I've actually completed everything else except the 75. So that's just where growing your audience is. So mm-hmm. I'm closest to that because I do not have the money for a Tesla right now since I'm getting married next year. <laughs> so. <laughs> So I, I'm pretty far off from that. Uh, oh, no, actually, I'm actually closer to the Tesla than I am the 75 views. Because <laughs> I've, I've, I've dropped down, like I said, I've dropped down a little bit. Just because things change. As you're playing, you change the games that you play, and people have different interests. And it's just hard to get those eyes on you. So that's why I also have a YouTube now. I'm trying to, I'm trying to bring in more eyes through different avenues. There you go. So yeah, I'm a Tesla, yeah. they're becoming a little bit cheaper, I guess. I'm like a couple of years oh. ago, like ninety thousand for a Model S, but now they have the Model Threes, mm-hmm. which are around thirty thousand ish, give or take. So exactly. So the hard part is in Florida, we don't get tax breaks. So if we're in New York, where I originally wanted to get one, people were getting like ten thousand back for buying a Tesla. Dang. Down here, you don't get any of that. So you're just pretty much buying it straight up and. So after taxes, it'd be like 40-ish thousand, 43,000 to get a Model 3, which is what I'm going for. There you go. So, yeah, it's just, that part is just hard work. I mean, I guess all of those are hard work. Yeah, but um, I guess that's, that's why you write it down, you know, to kind of speak into existence. I mean, that's, that's, that's how you get it. That's what I'm going for. You know? That's how I've done everything. But um, the second half of your question, how I made up the list. So um, I was bored one day, and I was just thinking <laughs> of things that I really want to do. And I'm like, these are things that are important to me. So getting my doctor was important. I, I like the fact that I can be called doctor and that I've done something. Um, the getting married is just important. I love Alyssa. I'm glad that we're able to share that. Um, getting a Tesla, that's just a me thing. I just, I love the idea of an electric car and it, I just like the company and everything they do. So I, I wanted that. And I wanted to work towards that. Um, the Twitch thing, I've always loved video games and working towards that stuff. So I just, I just wanted to be able to share something to people, with people. So this is just my way of trying to share something that I love with other people. The Price is Right, I've had an obsession with game shows since I was a child. <laughs> well, it showed me a kid in the 90s who didn't watch game shows when they were sick. Cause it, you, yeah, that's the you, best part of missing school is watching all the exactly. game shows at like 11 o'clock. Yeah, if you had a TV, you were watching a game show. So I grew up watching The Price is Right, uh, Wheel of Fortune, Supermarket Sweep, which just came back and I'm hype. Um, Just all those game shows. Like I watch game shows like crazy. So for me to be able to get on The Price is Right and stand next to Drew Carey and win, like I just want to spin the wheel. Just let me spin the wheel. 
Yeah, I would lose my mind. Like I'm normally, you know me from work. I'm normally like a quiet guy. I would lose my mind. Would <laughs> like, you? Would, 